And so just a little uh, background about this passage of scripture. In this moment, what they're talking about is basically uh, sexual impurity. And, but what I want to focus on is we're not going to talk about that today. That's not my place to, to discuss that. But in this particular message, that last part is what I want to focus on. You are not your own. You see, that's part of flipping your life upside down so that it can be right side up. It's to understand that this is not our life. You know, God has given us this life and it's our opportunity. And if we truly want to live the life that he made for us, we have to put him in his proper place. And so that's what I fo want to focus on is that it's not our life, it's his life. And so if we want to live the way that we're supposed to, we have to put him in there and let him lead the way. So um, like I said, I am the student pastor. And what I like to do whenever I do a message is I like to give them a question to think about as we go throughout the, uh, the message. And so the question that I have for you today that I want you to think about is, why do we constantly fill his place in our life with other things? You see, you know, as we accept Jesus, we have that choice. We have a choice to wake up in the morning, you know. He gives us that choice to accept him and to follow him. And so what comes along with that choice is that it doesn't end right there. Once you do accept Jesus into your life, you know, you wake up tomorrow and you're still in that same place, right? You still have the same distractions of the world. So you have to choose each and every day to continually to put him in the place where he belongs so that you can live the life that you're supposed to. And so, you know, we... We, we kind of get to understand that if you accept Jesus in your life, you understand the fact of the salvation, you know, that he died on the cross for me and that now I'm set free and I can have an everlasting life when and go to heaven. But we don't understand what comes along with that, that he wants so much more from us. He wants us to do great things, but we have to put him in his place. And so, but we put so many other things in his place. You know, we put our wife, we put our kids, we put our job, we put money, we put alcohol, we put all kinds of things in his place. And you know, a lot of those things, they're not bad things. You know, your wife, your kids, your job, money, that's not bad. But whenever you put it in God's place and you give it a godly place in your life, it becomes an idol. And when things become an idol in your life, that's when they're bad. And you know, so we got to keep God in his proper place so that that doesn't happen. Now, don't get me wrong. If you truly believe here today that money is bad, you know, we got an offering box in the back. You can give it to us. You know, we got great things that we want to do here. And so we'll make sure that it's not in that godly place. No, I'm just kidding. So, so how I want to go through this message is I'm going to talk about the benefits that we receive from God. And then when we put those things in their proper place, we receive those benefits. But when we put other things in its place, you know, there's a cost that comes along with that. And so these benefits that I'm going to talk about today, these are not the only benefits that you receive from God, but these are the ones that I want to focus on. And the first benefit that you receive is you receive an just resounding peace and joy in your life. When God's in his place and when God's where he's supposed to be, it doesn't matter what's happening around you. Like Pastor David said, you know, your world can be tumbling down. You know, right now we're in a world that everything seems upside down. But if you put God in your place and you focus on him, you can have peace and joy in that moment. And you know, you might think, well, you know, you might not be a follower of God. And you might say, well, you know what, I'm happy, I have peace. And you know, it's totally different, happiness and joy, it's not the same. You see, because with happiness, that's a feeling. And so when things are good, when times are going great, you know, you can be happy, any of us can be happy. But you know, what happens whenever that season changes? You know, what happens when you're going through that tough time? What happens when you and your wife are not communicating? You know, you still have that happiness, do you still have peace in the moment? No, those feelings take over now, your anger, you're mad, you're sad, all those things. But when you put God in his proper place, you put those feelings aside, the way that she treated you, the way that she talked to you, when you set that aside, you can have peace in that moment. You can understand that she's going through something. That she, you no, know, those actions are not meant for me. That's not her speaking, that's the enemy. You know, something going on in her life. And so when you put that in there, you have this joy. And you know, it's all in the word, because what joy truly means is, it's Jesus over you. So, you know, when you put joy and you have joy in your life, he's first, he's in his proper place. He's right where he needs to be. And so I've just got, what I like to do is tell stories because we can all relate to that, right? So I've got a couple of stories that go along with this. And the first story is, you know, we talked about finances and we talked about fighting. And so just a little background for me, like I said, I grew up, my dad wasn't around. He left us before I can even remember him ever being in the house. And so my mom, she had to raise me by herself. And so coming along with that and then my the only father figure I had in my life was my grandfather, and he passed away whenever I was 12, and that totally changed my world. I was so upset, 
I would blame God because I didn't have him in his proper place. I didn't understand what was going on. The only person, the only man, the only uh, male figure I had in my life was taken from me. I didn't understand why, but you know, I didn't have God in his place, so I didn't, I didn't wait. I didn't stand in that furnace like we learned in Daniel chapter 3, right, from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I didn't understand that God's going to see you there. He's going to come to you. He's going to be in that moment with you, and he's going to tell you something. He's going to explain something to you to get through that, but he wasn't in his proper place, so I didn't do that. So, you know, I had anger start building up and we were living with my, my grandmother moved in with us. So it was me and three women in my life. And so any guys that has a lot of women, you know, that's tough. <laughs> so, you know, I took it upon myself that my feelings didn't matter. You know, I had to put all my feelings aside because now I'm the male, I'm the, I'm the male figure. I'm had to be the man in the house. So I didn't talk about my feelings, kept everything bottled up. If I had God in his proper place, I would go to him with those feelings, even though I felt like I couldn't go to my sister or my mom or my grandmother. But I didn't do that, so I didn't talk to anybody. And anger just started to build up inside of me because I'd hold everything back. And you know, when you hold things back, you don't have that joy, you don't have that peace, it starts to pile up. And then someone, you know, says your hair is out of place and you blow up on them and you go crazy, you know. And so that would happen with me. We would be, I would just keep everything bottled in, something small, my mom would tell me to go clean my room. And I would go ballistic. I'd go in my room, I'd stand in front of my mirror, and I'd start punching myself or slapping myself, just taking out all that anger because I didn't know how to control it because I didn't release it to anybody. I didn't release it to God. I didn't have him in his proper place. And so, you know, that carried into our marriage. And, you know, that brings along stress. You're worried about everything. My mom, like I said, being a single parent, money was hard. We didn't have everything that we should have. It was me and my sister and her. She worked a full-time job, but she didn't go to college. You know, she didn't, she didn't have a lot of money. And so we struggled. And so, you know, I've learned everything from my mom. And though, though she was pouring out love for me, the only way that she knew how, but she didn't have God in the proper place either. So, you know, she stressed, she struggled, she worried. And so I picked up all of those things, every single one of them. And so as I got into my marriage with my wife, <laughs> Let me tell you, I had no clue what, what true love was supposed to look like, you know, that love between you and your wife. I didn't know that unconditional love that you're supposed to have because I didn't see it. I didn't have it anywhere. And so we struggled with things. We uh, had a child before we got married. We got married, so that was a struggle because in my eyes, I didn't have God in his proper place. That wasn't right. You weren't supposed to have a kid before you got married. So the whole time that we're in this marriage, I had love for her, but in the back of my mind, are we supposed to be together? You know, it didn't start off right. But if God was in my proper place, I would understand that I messed up, but he forgives me, right? Yeah. And not only does he forgive me, but he's going to turn that into good. So even though it started off wrong, he can make it right. Yeah. Oh, so and so as we were going through there, money came. And man, I used to stress so much about money. I worked too much. I put, I put my job in front of my family. I put my job where God's supposed to be. And so, you know, I didn't focus on them. I was away too much. I was working 70, 80 hours a week, wasn't paying attention to them, putting money up there. We still weren't making enough money in my eyes. You're looking at your bills, you're looking at what we have to pay, what's coming in, what she wants to do, Christmas presents, everything. It doesn't add up. And so she'd want to go get tennis shoes for the kids because they got holes in their feet and I go ballistic. We can't. Look at it. We can't even pay the bills that are coming up and you want to get this stuff that, you know, we don't need in my eyes. But we did, but I didn't, have, I didn't have God where we were supposed to be, and it almost tore our marriage up. And so we finally started to get right with God. We started to put him in his proper place, and so we started to say, you know what, we want that margin in our life. You know, Pastor David talks about that all the time. Get that margin in your life so you can be at peace, so you don't worry about money. So we were putting God in his proper place. We decided we were going to sell our house so that we could start tithing. Y'all ever heard that? I want to start tithing, but I can't right now. God, you said that prayer. God, if you could just give me this job, give me this promotion, if you could just sell my house, I can start giving back to you what's rightly yours. You know, I can start doing what you want me to do. And so we, we decided to sell our house and it had been on the market for six months. And we played, prayed that prayer day after day. God, if you could just do this for me, we could start doing what you want us to do. And then we'd say amen and we'd move on. We wouldn't sit there and wait for him to respond to us. You know, we didn't put him in his proper place. We said our peace, and then we just went about our business. Yeah. Nothing happened. It had been four months. No one had even called on the house. No one had done anything. We weren't even together. We were not separated. We were in a different part of the house, or I was at my job. She was at, at, at home. And we were praying, and God spoke to me, because this time I didn't say amen. 
You know, I said my piece and I waited to hear from him. And so whenever he spoke to me, you know what he said? He said, I want to give you this. I, I see what you want to do. I see you're trying to align yourself with me. But you know what? How do I know? The money that you have right now, you're not honoring me with. You're not putting me in my proper place. So if I give you more money, if I sell this house for you, who's to say that you're going to start doing what you're saying? Wow. You know, and neither, we hadn't even had this conversation. I come home. I said, Dr. So we got to talk. <laughs> and she said, yeah, we do, because she was having that same prayer, and God spoke to her the exact same way. And so in that instant, we sat down together. We decided we're going to put him first. Well, I get paid this Friday. We're going to start tithing immediately. And, you know, this time we prayed. We talked to God about it, and we told him. You know, God doesn't only hear the words that we say. He sees our heart, right? So he knows if it's true. He knows if we really mean it. And so we said that prayer and like I said, Friday I was getting paid. The next day was Thursday, I believe. We got a call. Someone wanted to come see the house. They came and see it Friday morning. They called back Friday night, the day that we tithed for the first time. She bought the house. Right then and there. For the asking price that we asked for, for everything. And you know, that's, that's when I knew right there that when you put God in his proper place, things change. And so, you know, we were talking about peace and joy. So, you know, after that, money still didn't add up, right? The income coming in, the bills going out, it still was in the same position. Just because I put God in his proper place, that didn't change all that. It allowed us to get rid of some of our debt. So it's coming a little bit back together, but it's still not right. But you know what? It changed me. It changed my attitude. I had a peace and I had a joy in that situation, no matter what was coming and when it comes to finances. And so those of you who have been coming to church here a lot, you know that a couple of years ago, I believe it was two years ago, I woke up one morning, I couldn't walk. Stepped out of bed and I fell to the floor. Had an issue with my back that had been going on for probably about 10 years and it just, it just broke. Disc broke my back. The gel had come out of the disc, and instead of going out into my back, it went, the inside of it broke, and so it went up into my spine, and it was crushing my spine. So, you know, there was all these things. You could have surgery. You could try these uh, steroid shots that they give to horse and stuff, like horse tranquilizers. You could do that. that would give you immediate relief, but it's going to destroy your back later. Or you could have surgery. And, you know, you hear those stories about surgery, Back surgery especially, you don't just have one, right? If you do a back surgery, you end up having to do multiple. So I didn't want to do any of that. So I believed in God. I put him in his proper place. Pastor David brought me up here. The elders, the church community, they prayed over me, prayed over my back. So we, tried, we started going to a chiropractor. I had to go to them every single day. Still, our money's still not right. Every time I went in there, I had to pay $60. Had to go there four days a week. Would have been five, but they're closed on Fridays. And you know, in the way they are, oh, we've got to have that money up front. You know, we can't help you unless you show us that money. So I had to put other bills aside to pay this because I couldn't go to work if I can't walk. You know, I had to do these things. And you know, in the past, psh, I mean, like, I, what I would have said is, Darcy, we're going to have to get a wheelchair. I can't do this. We can't afford this. I can't do that. But you know what? I had faith. I kept God in his proper place in that time. And so I went. I wrote that check every single day. And knowing in my mind, okay, electric bill ain't getting paid. We're not going to have any food. You know, all this stuff was going through my mind. But, you know, I didn't let it affect me. I stayed strong. I believed. I had peace. I had joy in my life. And so, you know what happened? It was about two weeks in. I hadn't paid that whole week. They obviously didn't notice or something because they let me keep coming in. <laughs> And so one day, this lady at my work, she, she pulled me aside and she said, you know, I know what's going on and I want you to write me a letter. Write me a letter of what you're dealing with and why you can't afford it. And so I wrote that letter and I gave it to her. I didn't know what was going on. She came back to me four days later with a check for $1,000 from my, from my job because they, they, have a, they have a program there that I, had nothing, I knew nothing about. That if you're struggling and, and life events happen like that, that they want to help you. So I was able to give that money. And it's not because I put stress and I put worry and stuff in my life. It's because I put God in his proper place. Yeah. And so the next benefit that we have is the knowledge and understanding of love. See, like I said, my mom, she loved me the only way she knew how. But as I said, she, she knew God, she knew who he was, but he's not in his proper place. So, you know, the love that she had for me was the only love that she knew. And so that's the love that I carried with me. But you see, whenever you know who God is, 
and you put him in his proper place. You know, we all have that moment where we reach that salvation and we experience this overwhelming experience. But after that, you still don't know God yet. You have to put him in his proper place every single day. You have to get into the word. You have to pray. You have to talk to him. You have to build that relationship so you can learn that unconditional love that he stayed on the cross, his son Jesus, on the cross. He could have got down there at any moment. He could have done it another way, but it was unconditional love that held him up there. And that's the love that we need to understand each and every day so that we can live the life that we're supposed to live. And so, like I said, I didn't do that. And so other things in our marriage started to happen. The bills are right before we did to get right with God. It wasn't just the bills. The reason why my dad left is because he was an alcoholic. He allowed that to be controlling his life. He, you see, he, he still does not know God to this day. In this moment right now, he does not know who God is. And I'm not gonna, I don't use the word, he doesn't believe in God because I know God and I know God's real. So you know what, he just hasn't had the chance to meet him yet. And you know, but the reason why he left was because alcohol. And so that's in my blood, you know, I, I have a problem with alcohol. I didn't know it at the time because, you know, we put, we put ourselves in that place, you know, I can handle it. I'm not going to be like my dad. I'm not going to allow that to take over me. And so as we were in our, in our relationship and starting out our marriage, I'd come home from a rough day and I didn't have God in his proper place, so I needed a drink. I wanted alcohol in the house so that I could drink it because I just need to relax. You know, I just need to put that where it, just let me have just one drink, two drinks, and I can relax. Everything will be Okay. You know, to me, oh, I just get drunk. These issues will go away. You know, but we get a mistake. Whenever we put those type of things in God's place, nothing goes away. We become numb for that moment, right? We forget about it, but it's not gone. But you know, then that next day, when we get up, it's still right there. Nothing's changed. It didn't go away. We just destroyed our own minds. And so when it comes back and it's still there, not only are we dealing with that, but now we got a hangover. We don't even want to go to work the next day. You know, but you see, when you put God in your proper place and you let God take it, so whenever you're dealing with those struggles and you feel like you just, you just can't go on, you talk to him. And, you know, it doesn't just fade away for a minute. He removes that from your life. And he puts things in his proper place. But I didn't do that. And in my mind, she was trying to control me. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. I don't want that in my life. You know, that's how I felt because God wasn't in his proper place. So it was, it was a battle between me and her. I'm a grown man. If I want to have a drink, I can have a drink. But you know, at that time, I wasn't living right. So I threw a, I'm a grown A man up in here, you know, had to let her know, had to be strong. And then you know what she would throw out at me? Oh, does that make you feel tough? You're cussing now, huh? Does that make you feel better about yourself? And you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, you're right. But in the front of my mind, I was like, heck yeah, it does, girl. Now go on out of here so I can have my drink in peace. And so, but I mean, it just continued, continued to fester, didn't understand love. And you know, another thing is because like I said, I put everything aside, I didn't talk about my feelings. So when we would get into a situation and we needed to talk about something, I wouldn't say anything because I didn't know how to express myself. Because of the anger and everything that I had built up, it wouldn't go the way it was supposed to. It wouldn't come out right. I couldn't say it in a way that she would understand without anger just building from it. But you see, on the other side, we bring what we know into our relationship. So on her side coming into the relationship, you know, she had her mom and dad there. They were in her life. But you see, her dad, kind of like me, his dad wasn't around. And so the focus that he had is, you know, he has to provide for his family, and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. He had to provide for his family, so he did everything he could. He was working all the time, he, but he was off, and he was doing tournaments so that he could bring more money in so he could provide for his family. But, you know, what she saw in that growing up is that her mom had the say in all the decisions in the house, right? That's what she was used to. And so when we'd come in a situation, she wouldn't even come to me to ask my opinion. And you know what, I probably wouldn't have gave it to her anyways because, you know, I keep everything bottled up. And so she would just make decisions in her life where she would go to her mom and ask things and just leave me out of it. And that just began to fester, you know, part of it because I wasn't saying what I needed to say, but also she wasn't even giving me a choice. She wasn't even including me in this marriage. And so it continued to build up. 
until we got into a friendship. We got around people that we shouldn't have been around because we don't have God in our proper place. So, you know, you know what it says that iron sharpen irons and as one man should sharpen another man. Because we didn't know the love, we didn't see things clearly, because not only is there a benefit of knowledge and understanding of love, but there's also another benefit from God, which is better understanding. And so I'm pulling these two together right now. And so you have a better understanding of relationships, that's a benefit from God. Because whenever you put him in his proper place and you're thinking clearly, you run to the right people whenever, you know, your marriage is going bad. You understand who's in it for themselves and what they can get out of your relationship with them. And you run to people who's going to turn you back to God. People who are going to sharpen you, like it says. And you saw, but at this time, neither of us were really good at that. She was much farther along. She understood that the people we were hanging with weren't right. There was nothing wrong with them. To them, you know, everything was good. And I'm, and I'm not saying what they did in our life, you know, they did it on purpose. They were trying to hurt us. But they didn't know any better because they didn't have God in their proper place. So we were hanging around people who were drinking. She didn't want to be a part of that because, like I said, she knows where, what my father did. You know, she knows where he came from. So she had that love for me and that understanding of she didn't want alcohol in the house. Not because it's bad because it's only bad if, you know, you overuse it or whatever. But she knew what it does to me and she didn't want to be a part of that. So she had already separated herself from these friends, but I didn't. And the reason why is because she wouldn't listen to me when I wanted to speak. But if I went to these friends, I'd go over to their house, I'd go to the bar where they're at without my wife, which is not right. You know, you shouldn't be in a bar anyways. You're not gonna meet the right person there. Now you can, like I said, God can use anything and turn it to good, right? Like he did with our situation with our, when we had a kid before we were married. But it's not the best place to do it. So I would still show up with them and I would drink there. I'm a married man, my wife's not there. I'm hanging out with them. You know, so when you get a couple of drinks in you, you start to open up, right? You feel loose, you feel easy, it's easy to talk about things. So I would start expressing myself to them. You know, I just want to, I just want to be a part of my kid's life. I just want to do this, that, and the other. You know, I'm not happy, da, 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 da. Everything just spilling out. But to me, they were listening. No one's ever listened to me before. So I kept going back to that, right? It wasn't the right thing, it wasn't the right place, it wasn't the right relationship, but someone was listening. And because they were listening, I was listening to them. Oh, you're not happy, you just need to get a divorce, right? You need to move on with your life. If she's not able to see your side and she's not, you know, this, that, you just need to move on. That's not right. You know, that's not what's supposed to be. What they should have been doing is saying, you know, you need to go to God with this. Are you, are, are, do you have God in his proper place? Do you see her side of the story? Do you see where she's coming from? It's not about you. You know, you got to see it from her perspective. If, she, if you don't like the way she is, when she's asleep at night, put your hand on her and pray. You know, pray for her. Because when you pray for someone else, especially someone that's upset you, someone that you have a bad relationship, someone that's hurt you, it doesn't change them. It changes you. It changes your perspective on the situation. You see? And so what we have to understand is that it was New Year's Eve. And all this stuff had, had piled up. And I had asked her to go to this party with these same group of friends. And she had said she wasn't doing it. And at, my, at the job that I was at at the time, you had to, uh, we had to work on New Year's Eve. And so I was at my job, and you know, in my mind, she's not going, I don't care, I'm still going, right? Because this is my life. You know, I had that, I had that, I made that choice, this is my life. But what do we learn from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19? It's not my life. You know, I'm putting myself where God's supposed to be. And so as I was sitting there, and you know, we don't get any calls on New Year's Eve, only if, you know, I work for a place that deals with banks, only if they have, have problems. And so on this, they're just doing updates and everything for the year. And so we don't get a lot of calls. So I had a lot of time to sit there and think, you know, in my mind, I was still going to this party. It doesn't matter. But you know what? Right then and there, whenever I said that this is my life, I can do what I want. God spoke to me, this is not your life. This is my life. And you've been running from me for years. You've been putting yourself first. You've been putting alcohol first. You've been putting everything else in my place. And I'm not mad at you. You know, I had an anger for God. I thought he didn't care. He wasn't around. As I looked through my life, he was never there. But you know what he wants you to know? Is that he's always there. 
even if you don't know him, he still knows you. And he's, he's followed your life in every situation and everything you've done. He's been right there. He's not mad. He's not condemning you. He's just sitting back patiently, waiting for the day when you'll take everything out of his spot so he can have his rightful place. And you know, so in that moment, I decided to do that. And thank God that I did. Because at that same moment in time, my wife was at our house moving everything she had out of our room. She had made the same decision that she still loved me. She still wanted this to work, but she can't keep holding on. You know, she has to start thinking about other things. She's still praying for me. She hadn't given up on the marriage, but, you know, she, she had God first, and she had to start focusing on her and those kids. And so we didn't, I didn't had no clue about this. And so as I went home, she was gone. She went out to dinner with her parents and took the kids with her because, you know, she had to get her mind off of the fact that I was going to this party. So I got home, she wasn't there, I walked into my room. There was nothing there. Almost everything, because you know, I finally had given in and let her decorate the room and stuff, you know, I had taken myself out of the situation. So, so she had everything moved out. There, I had a pillow and a blanket is probably about it in there. You know, and so I knew in that moment that I had to make a change. And so we still had these situations to deal with, but now I started getting in the Word and I understand what love is. My relationships, he clearly showed me what was going on in these relationships that I had. So I had to, I immediately, there's some point in time where you can't worry about other people's feelings. When, 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 when you're around people who are not right for you and who are, who are getting your focus away from God, you don't have to go to them. You don't have to explain anything. You have to do what you have to do. You have to get right with God and you have to separate yourself. <laughs> you know what? And at some point in time, they will understand why you made the decision that you had to make. But you can't worry about that. You can't worry about that. That's not, that's not yours because there is a point in time where you don't just leave friends whenever they're going through things and they're not right, but you have to be strong enough. You have to have God in his proper place before you can, you can go to them and try to help them. And that was not where I was at that moment in time, so I had to separate myself from that. And it was like a 180 degree flip after that. We still had a lot of stuff to go through, but you know what? This whole time we've been on opposite ends battling each other. We realized that the whole focus was on the enemy, and so you know what? Now we're on the same side. And not only are we on this side together, but God's standing in front. He's leading the way because he's in his proper place, so we have no worries. The next situation, and so as we were going through that, like I said, you start understanding the relationships you have. So you know what I did next? I made a choice to step into the doors of this church. You know, we put on masks to hide. Like I said, people couldn't tell that I had these anger issues. People couldn't tell that I was dealing with all this stuff because on the outside, everything looked fine. But when I walked into these doors four years ago, when I made that choice, I was a broken man. I was broken. You couldn't tell from the outside, but on the inside, I was done. But I made a choice to step in these doors, hear a word from Pastor David, and let me tell you, it felt like I was sitting on this front row, nobody else was in this place, and that he was speaking directly to me about every single situation that was going on in my life. And then I made another choice to put God first. I decided to get into a small group. I decided to surround my myself and my family and my wife with people who are going to point me back to God. You know, people that will allow me to speak, allow me to express myself, allow me to tell my side of the story. But you know what? They're not just going to sit there and be like, man, I'm with you. You know, they're not going to hop on my side and start, you know, just going. They're going to say, okay, I hear what you're saying. So what does God say about this? What does God tell you to do about this? You know? And so it started changing our life. The next benefit is fearlessness, no regrets. Have y'all ever been around people where when you immediately come in contact with them, you know there's something different about them? You know, they just express that joy and that peace about their life that it just exclude, it just comes out of them and you can see it when you walk into the room. Well, as in my job, I have to travel in my old job and as I travel, we had to go to Wisconsin 
about five times in this, the past five months. First time we went there, we're in this little town. There are no restaurants in the town. There's nothing within 45 miles of this town. But there's one little cafe nine miles away. It's the only cafe open, it's the only place to eat. So you know, you could go in there and these people, they know that there's nowhere else around here so they could treat you however they wanted to treat you. You know, and you're gonna have, if you wanna eat somewhere besides what you're cooking, you're gonna have to come unless you wanna travel an hour. But we walked into this place and it's just a husband and wife, they own this place. And they, his name is Eddie, her name is Sue. And there is nothing but love that pours out of them and everything they do. As we sat there, and so, you know, it's the only place to eat, so we're eating there every day for lunch. This first week, I'm there for a week, and then we were gone. We come back four weeks later, or, there, or four months later, we're there for another week. Then I was there for two weeks, then I was there for another week. So we're going here the same place every day. But so this first week as I'm there, I'm noticing they know every single person's name that comes through that door. They make it a point to know who they are, to, you know, invest in their life. And I haven't had food better than that anywhere I've ever ate in my life. Because she has joy and she has passion, love is poured into that food and it comes out. And so you know what I noticed? And so, you know, you see that. And so I asked them because I knew something was different about them. So I said, tell me about this shop. Because this, this cafe has only been open for six months. And so I said, can you tell me your story? How did this come up? And the very first words out of his mouth is God. He's like, all I can tell you is God had his hand in everything. So he, he begins to tell me the story and what he says is, you know, I've been a dog, he was a dog trainer his whole life. That's all he did was train dogs. His wife worked for AT&T. Never cooked professionally, he never worked in a restaurant, nothing like that. He trained dogs so he didn't even have interaction with people really, you know, it was him and a dog. So he doesn't know really how to, how to interact with people and you can tell that if he wanted to, he could rough you up pretty bad. I mean, he carries a gun, on his side, everywhere he goes, in his, in his, uh, at the job, no matter where he's at. And so I, asked, I said, so then how did y'all end up here? And they said, well, we had an opportunity. I had an opportunity, Sue had retired, so she wasn't working for AT&T anymore. I had an opportunity to come out, they're from Chicago. Had an opportunity to come out to Wisconsin and uh, come out to Wisconsin and for, for this dog training opportunity. So he gets involved with it and as they're in it, something's just not right. He's not liking the way that they're training these dogs. But you know, they've given everything for this. They, they, they left everything in Chicago, came out here. So he sticks with it. One of the things that they do with the dogs that he did not know at the time is as they train them, they were using their child. So they were doing like attack codes and stuff with this dog to train them and they were using one of their kids to practice this against. And you know, as things happen, one night when they were doing that, the dog attacked the child and the child ended up dying. And so in that moment, they knew they had to get separate from that. It didn't matter that this is the only thing they came for, so they, you know, he, he quit that next day. And they saw this cafe was for sale. And they had all, she had always talked about owning a cafe. You know, she wanted to cook. She cooks for her family all the time, never done it professionally. So her and two of her sisters were supposed to come along and they were gonna go see this. They had an appointment made already. Both of her sisters backed out. Both of her sisters backed out. Couldn't do it. And that was where their money was coming from. So they were like, you know, we have this appointment. We're going to go ahead and go. They went. They fell in love with the place and they decided to do it. They went home, prayed about it. God said, do it. So they did it. No experience. Didn't know what to do. And it is just booming. They sell out every single day. And there's like 240 people that live in this town that I that I go to. And there's a town, you know, on the other side, 10 miles, and there's maybe 300 people. But every single day, they sell out of everything that they make. She makes homemade pies, everything. And if you ask them, all it is is because they put their faith in God. And you, so we do, they, they didn't live in fear because, you know, we hear, oh, we want to do this in our life, but, you know, I can't do that because of this. I can't do that because of that. I'm, I've been working this job for 30 years. It's all I know. I can't go do that. But, you know, when you put your trust in God, you're fearless. If he tells you to do it, you do it, right? It doesn't matter, you know he'll make a way because he's in his proper place in your life. So the last thing that I wanna talk about, the last benefit is clarity. God will clear up so many things in your life if you put him in his proper place. Situations you're dealing with in the moment or things from your past. 
And so he clarified in that moment when I started to put him in his place, I still had an anger for my father passing away or my grandfather passing away. Because at that time, he was the only father figure. He was my best friend. When he passed away, because I didn't have God in his proper place, I didn't sit and wait for him to reveal what's going on in this moment. You know, I just turned to anger. But a little bit after that, when my grandmother uh, moved in, she had told me a story about him that whenever he was in the military, he was in World War I, he was, that whenever they traveled from base to base, they were in a bus. There was two buses. Every time they traveled, you had to be in that same seat on that same bus every single time. But for whatever reason, this one night, he chose to sneak on the other bus. He wanted to play cards with his, his friends. He wanted to hang out with them. So he was able, he got on the bus successfully. They started traveling. They, it was late at night. They pulled up to this uh, train's, you know, a railroad crossing. And they were stopped because the train was coming. Well, the bus in front was the bus he was supposed to be in. But he wasn't there because he was in the other one. And so the bus driver had fallen asleep as the train was getting close. And his foot slipped off the brake. And, that, and their bus got right on the track and the train hit him. There was a couple of survivors, but everybody around the area where my grandfather was supposed to be sitting passed away immediately. You know, when, when my wife, or my wife, when my grandmother first told me that story, it didn't mean anything to me. But now that I'm putting God back in his place and, and he's understanding how I had all this, you know, anger towards him, it became so clear to me why that story was told to me. And that story was told to me that, you know, instead of me being in anger and me not understanding that, God didn't take him from me. In that moment, God saved him so that I could have an opportunity to have a relationship with him. See, God knows that my dad wasn't going to be around. So, you know, he, he's, he, to me, this is what he was saying, is that he allowed, he kept my grandfather alive so that I would have somebody in my life to build a relationship with, to see what a father figure was supposed to be like. But you know, at the time I didn't have that clarity because I wouldn't, didn't have God in his proper place. So he will go to your past and you'll start to point out things where you thought God wasn't anywhere around and he was right there. But you know what? You didn't put him in his proper place and he was speaking to you, but you were too far away to hear him. You know, and then the last thing he gives you clarity for in, in current situations, and for me that situation was, you know, he had finally put, I put him in his proper place, he put a purpose in my life. I've always wanted to help out kids, and you know, now I was seeing the opportunity that he was giving me. But you know, when you see that purpose in your life, you want it to happen right now. You know, and so to me, I still had my other job, and I'm like, God, what am I even doing here? I see the purpose you have for me, so make a way, you know, let's do this now. You know, and, and, and you know, so he answered that question. So two days later, after I had uh, had that confrontation and that, uh, you know, I had that conversation with him, I had my review for work. And one of the things that came out of that review was, they said, one of the main things that we love about you and the reason why we added you on this team is because when we travel to other banks, you know, we go there five, six times throughout the year. And so we build a relationship with these people, a long lasting relationship. But whenever you started to travel with us, the first week we were there, the first time, and we just met these people, by the end of that week, the janitor's giving you a hug before y'all leave to go back, you know. They're bringing you food for lunch every day that they made, you know, and we're having to go out and get our own food. He said, you just have a love and people are attracted to you that we just don't understand. You know, and so God clear, clarified that for me right now. You know, I have a purpose for you. But you know what? You also have a purpose in the moment of where you are. And that job that you have, that's your platform to show other people who I am. To spread that love to them. And so, you know, don't force the process. Stand in the moment. Put God in his proper place and let him reveal to you what he has for you now. Because what that is doing is it's teaching you and it's helping you grow so that when he does put you in that purpose and he gives you that opportunity, you'll be able to go for it. And do it the way that he wants you to do. So I'm closing with this. You know, we've been talking about choices. You have a choice to wake up every day and actually get out of bed. God's the one that wakes you up. But you have a choice to get out of bed. You have a choice to come in here today. It's all about choices each and every day. And so we talked about my, my father. And because I've got God in his proper place, like I said, he still does not know who God is. And there's so much anger that I could have for him. You know, and, and in this world, in the world we live in, 
I would be right in my anger according to the world, right? You know, he wasn't there for you. He didn't provide for you. He, he said he was going to show up and take you places, and he didn't come. And then your friends went to those places and saw him there and came back and told you. You could have so much anger for him in the moment. But, you know, I have clarity in my life. I have God's first. I don't have any anger for him. You know, I've made the choice to forgive him. You know why? Because God forgave me. You know, things that I've done in my life aren't right. And it's no different than the things that he's done in his life. And so whenever I talk to him on the phone, I make a choice each and every day to show him love. And I can see the regret that he already is, is, is realizing in his life. Because, you know, he doesn't have God first. So he has that regret. He's not fearless. He doesn't have peace and joy. He's looking back at his life and the things he missed out on with us. And you can see it in our grandkids. The things he tries to do for them because he missed out on the stuff that he didn't do for me. And he's trying to replace it. And I see that. He tells me I love you probably 20 times when we have a conversation on the phone. Because I can, and I can feel it. It's because he's sad and he regrets everything. So I made a choice to forgive him. Because you know what? I might be the only light that he sees. I might be the only God that he ever gets to witness to. And if I don't take that opportunity and I hold a grudge against him, I'm no better than he is. So I made a choice. I made a choice. And you know what? You have a choice today too. So with your head...